Welcome, Welcome to, to Keep Snacking. Season two. <laughs> we made it. We by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> we are an hour late in recording our session today. Yes. Due to green face on Zoom. Yeah, if you've some, heard of this. some tech difficulties, but um, we made it. We don't need to revisit. We're Looks here. Looks like we made it. <laughs> this is post the coup. This yes. is. Uh, we're filming this on January 16th. It's not going to come out till later. Um, so a, a lot of things We've are fresh already been through on a the lot mind this year. Yeah, 2021. I always think of every time it's a new year, I think of that Kylie video that got edited in 2018 when she's like, oh, me and my friends are just, we're really into realizing things. <laughs> and then it goes to 2018 looking good. <laughs> so it always plays in my head. Yes, we are looking good because today. Oh, yeah. We we're are both wearing, wearing our ambitious, ambitious sweatshirts by from, phenomenal women. Yeah. And if you're not, and well, first I'll say a phenomenal woman bought this for me as one of my Christmas oh. holiday gifts, which is my, 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 my Simona. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Jesse. <laughs> you're welcome. Anytime. Uh. You got it, dude. <laughs> so, um, but it's inspired by the phenomenal Maya Angelou poem, the phenomenal women campaign. Right. And it benefits lots of injustice and lots of women run foundations. Um, and so it's very nice to have a gift that not only means a lot, but from a person that means a lot, but that we're benefiting something that means yeah. a lot. Yeah, I like that. Like, I mean, uh, you know, you see the phenomenal women t-shirts like everywhere on Instagram and stuff and the company definitely stands for something. So why not have a sweatshirt that shows what our plans are for 2021 being more ambitious and then also supporting women, women supporting women. <laughs> Instead of Fergalicious, we're being ambitious. That should My have been a stayed. part of the... yeah song for sure it should have it should have working on my fitness cocoa puffs something in your cocoa puffs <laughs> which could be a Wait. song we do one day milky cocoa milky puffs? cocoa puffs yeah that's a different song no it's in that song and um no also, it's not on fergalicious there's no I cocoa am, puffs in that song i'm 99 percent sure it's in there no way wait no and my dad. dad goes that's drugs that's marijuana laced <laughs> with cocaine Right away. Maybe. Milky, milky <laughs> cocoa. <laughs> that is not in Fergalicious. I, I will say that. But it is in a different Fergie song. Um, so 2021 updates slash end of 2020 updates. Um, I, thank you to our listeners. Yes. Thank we you ended, for sticking with us. We ended with eight full episodes of shows and 12 minisodes, which right now are still being released as we're right. recording this and then this will be released i think around valentine's day ish ish sometime in which February. actually is perfect because if you're watching on youtube these sweatshirts are pink and red yeah <laughs> perfect for v-day but we planned on doing a couple more episodes simona's gonna tell you why we called it quits yeah. but i ended up probably being good in general because we know i moved like four times last year um, plus it was a rough year, plus there was a lot going on. And then towards the end of the year, we found out this unsettling news. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, in December, my whole family got COVID-19. Um, and it was a real blow because I've been super careful and she did not move to the city. If everyone remembers, she is paying for an apartment <laughs> in the city and Queens um, and is not living there. Right. So. But I, I, cause I stayed with my parents, um, you know, for several reasons, but like, I, it, it's been nice being with them, but my father is a physician and he worked 
at a hospital and that's how he got it. We didn't, we were not unsafe. We weren't like, you know, doing indoor dining or anything, you know, it was, I stayed home. I didn't see anybody. I stayed home and it was heartbreaking that we got it in December and my parents are in their seventies. So it was always a huge concern for my, like, I just, you know, I wanted to be extra careful to protect them. And then the irony is that dad got it, brought it to all of us. And we were weeks away from dad getting the vaccine because not only is he in his seventies, but he's a medical worker. So he would have probably been first in line. Um, and you know, it, it's been a really tough time. I just want to say that I think that people have fatigue when it comes to COVID and the quarantine and lockdowns and all of that, but it is still very serious. And I, that's the only message I want to say, because I'm still battling through it. We got it early December. Now it's mid January. I think it's still long haul. I feel fine. You know, I never got bad symptoms, but, um, both of my parents have not had a great go of it. It has been super rough and, um, please keep wearing masks, protecting yourselves and really protecting others. And I think it's just a shame that like a lot of people are not doing the right thing. Yes. And as a bystander of this, I learned a lot too. And that Simona and honestly, another good friend of mine in Georgia that ended up getting it, who were also people that were being safe, um, did not have temperatures like yeah, everyone else. None of my parents have temperatures. Like we never had temperatures. It wasn't a symptom. And so, you know, the whole temperature check thing, no, I'm not saying it's a sham because I'm sure that one of the strands, the fever was, you know, predominant. Um, sore throat was a big one for my friends and for Simona. It was interesting. Simona's in Jersey, they're in Georgia, and it almost seems like they had the same strand at the same time. Um, and so, I mean, I, so it was, I took a lot of notes because I'm like, <laughs> if I end up having symptoms, you know, what every, it's just crazy. It's literally the viral sensation you know, crossing the nation that has every symptom possible in its pocket. Mm -hmm. So if you even feel remotely off for more than a couple of days, highly recommend shooting that Q-tip right up the schnoz because I just freaking check so that you're not, not telling people. And if you do get it, the test and you've been around people, please tell people you've been around, even if you've been safe. Um, that happened to me. And I ended up getting tested again, just to make sure, even though I was being insanely safe in the situation, but do that courtesy to the people around you. It, they're going to be more mad at you if they don't, if you don't, and yeah. you, you know, and they're apt to hurt somebody. So what we have to say is we are so gracious and grateful that Simone is well, um, because of the sense of smell situation, we decided to cut oh, right. the last two seasons, uh, last two episodes of last season, um, out. And, um, but we did still have our strategy meeting and went in pretty hard for, I think what I think is going to be a really fun second season of this show. And, um, but please stay safe, please. If you have questions even about COVID and symptoms, comment wherever um because we have somebody that has fully been indoctrinated in a in in a plethora of the situation um and and i think it's also important to note that you also plan on because we uh simona also had a birthday over oh right our little break so happy yeah. birthday it was last week so it was and january 37th. 9th um yes and um but yeah it's Oh, go ahead. I was going to say not to belittle your birthday, but because of your age, 37, people are underestimating their heart situations, that are, mm -hmm. conditions that are going on in COVID. And so Simona is going to be going to get her heart checked because she wants to work out per normal. And it's, and we have, and I, I just think that we're, 
not taking this part too seriously. Like you're seeing that trend where people are just dropping like hats, you know? Right. And you just, here's the thing. We don't know a lot about the virus and we don't know the damage that the virus is doing internally. And so if you do have it and you've had mild symptoms like me, um, you should, once you're fully well, like I have since tested negative. So I think I'm, you know, in the clear, I do, uh, want to go see some, you know, different doctors and just check up on things because, you know, um, even if you're 22 and you had COVID, just get yourself checked out, like go to your GP at least. Um, but yeah, it's not to be taken lightly at mm -hmm. the end of the day. And also, like Lauren said, you just don't know what symptoms you're going to be presented with. And so I had different symptoms than my parents and, um, it was funny because I started keeping a list because I was like, is this a symptom? Is that a symptom? And like some of them was like, I was on the, I think I was FaceTiming with Lauren and I like turned my head and she's like, what, did you see something? I'm like, no, I feel like I'm hearing seltzer bubbles, but <laughs> there, there's no seltzer. And I'm like, that's a COVID symptom. So I just told her to write everything down. She can yeah. write a blog about this later. So <laughs> I just, well, I'm just going to say I like symptoms, sore throat, chest heaviness, hearing seltzer bubbles with no seltzer, left index finger pain, mm -hmm. eye twitching, scalp pain, chapped lips, dry skin, stuffy nose, aches, chills, mucus and throat and then a loss of smell i mean and obviously diarrhea. oh right yes lots um, of it we were <laughs> like i didn't know when i first got it like i didn't know that gi symptoms were a thing i mean like i didn't know that was a major symptom but that's mostly what i had so <laughs> yeah i check booty I, booty burning booty I, burn i check on her booty burn quite often because that's what real friends do everyone yes you check so um yeah that's the COVID update that's the new year update. Well, I'm ready to move on, but I will yes. say um, I'm nervous about trying whatever we're trying for you today because I, I, my sense of smell, I didn't lose sense of taste, but my sense of smell is not a hundred percent. So I'll try to give you the best nose I can. But we know that if it stinks, I'm just going to tell you. So yeah. <laughs> I think we've got, we've got a good backup schnoz right here. <laughs> um, well, but we're so happy to be back for season two. Uh, we've got a couple of fun things for you. First off, I'm not doing the backgrounds. I made this, I made this conscious decision yeah, that's if, for, for our listeners. They have no idea what you're talking about, but, but on Lauren, YouTube, I usually have backgrounds. a virtual background. The first one I did was because I was in the middle of moving on our first app. And I was like in disarray, like the right. back of what I had behind me was nuts. And so, um, I had this cool photo I actually took, I think it was before we took the, um, there's like that shuttle bus that takes you to, uh, like the Rockaways and like the beaches and stuff. And, um, I, so I was like in Brooklyn, like waiting for that, I think it was mm -hmm. with Christina Parvu. And so I was just, you know, taking photos cause I'm artsy fartsy like that. <laughs> And I had like, I think my real, a real camera with me too. And so I was taking those photos. And so I had like a cool little bodega picture. And then after that, I was like, I guess I have, I committed to this. <laughs> so, but uh, I liked it. Well, and I'm not saying I'll never do it again, but what I will say <laughs> is this, when you're watching a full episode and I'm constantly going in and out and I look crazy in it, I, it gets annoying when watching the YouTubes. So mm -hmm. if you guys want me to bring back the photos then just tell me and I'll do it. But if not, I'm just not going to do it. I even took a photo of our episode for today, like all of them spread out, Simona, that mm. I had like my own original photo for the background. But um, yeah, I'm just going to wait on it. I'm just all right. Wait. That's fine. New year, and new the, you. <laughs> and then um, the other update is we have a new segment that I'm actually, <laughs> I think it's hilarious um, that a friend of the pod has, uh, proposed to us. And I think we, we, we had a meeting and we signed off of it. So we want to thank, um, Mitchell Gorski for being, uh, the first friend of the pod to give us a snacking goes wrong. <laughs> We're going to do this in the beginning of every episode because I think snacking goes wrong more than we know. And for sure. I mean, like when you're snacking, it's not like you're usually in like some elegant fair in a ball gown, right? Like usually you're in your sweats, 
in the privacy of your own home, maybe, and things can get sloppy. Sloppy real fast. Yeah. And this, this snacking goes wrong is no exception. Ugh, of, although sloppy fest. <laughs> this is, a, this is sloppy fest express. If we, if we want to give it the, like all the S's. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one is, is a little political and hilarious. And I don't know if I fully believe it. Okay. So this snacking goes wrong is from CNN politics. And this one is, I think is pretty severe <laughs> in my opinion. It's, a little um, out it's outrageous. Yeah. I mean, but it also, uh, it could be true. Like I, well, I'll just read it. So um, this was a correction to, I think, a previous, I don't know if it was on a video or an article. Um, it said a previous version of this story misstated that Senator Zodiac Killer, I'm adding that part, uh, Ted Cruz was I was going to ask, is that his like real title? <laughs> That's what he puts on his business cards. So sorry, in, my, in my mind, if we're going to call him a senator, that has to be part of it. Um, I am fine with that. <laughs> was seen wearing a pin featuring a QAnon symbol. It was later wow. discovered, which is part the part that's maybe not shocking, right? Um, it was later discovered that this was not a QAnon pin, but... Doritos snack chip stuck to his <laughs> I have so many questions. Is QAnon's symbol exactly a Dorito chip? I don't know. That was, and I'm afraid to Google it because yeah, I, mean, the I don't want that showing up in my and, history. <laughs> I mean, just us saying QAnon so many times, I'm sure they're starting to listen flagged. on our phones and stuff. But, um, but the fact that it looks like a Dorito, like which one? Is it nacho? Is it... Cool ranch. I, I don't think it's, I think it has to be a bright orange visible thing. So it has to be nacho. Be nacho. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so thank you, uh, Mitch, for sending this over to us. If, if you guys find any, you know, snacking goes wrong in your life as a story and or in the news, please share with us because I think this is something that's really, I mean, you could be considered part of like the most radical group in America um, <laughs> or have a Dorito chip on your <laughs> who runs the gambit. Uh, wow. Pretty intense. Wow. Pretty intense. <laughs> um, I love this segment <laughs> so very much. Yes. I, I mean, I feel I, like people are just, um, there's just going to be weird stuff with food that yeah. that's going to pop up let's on this get, segment. Let's get weird. Let's so, get weird. Let's let's see what happens. So let's get in today's app. Today's app, and thanks for letting us talk a bit this morning um, or afternoon or evening whenever you're listening to this on um, on our recap because we feel like we know you guys as listeners. We appreciate you guys as listeners, and thank you for going into season two with us. So, Simona, what are we doing today? This was a Simona... <laughs> request so i want to give her the ability to talk a bit about it and then i will go into the history as i normally do um well <clears throat> as so this as our listeners should know i am always late at night googling <clears throat> excuse me snacks <laughs> that um we can eat or that i want to eat and i think for a long time i've been wanting to try different um asian kit kats because uh like at least Japan has their kit, their Kit Kat game is strong. There's they have a billion flavors, and I've been wanting to try them because I always want to try you know different things. And so on Amazon, I found this package that had like again like a trillion different types of Kit Kats, and um, I sent it to Lauren. I'm like, can we please try these on air? So I think we're only going to try a couple because there's so many. So this is not this is a to be continued series. Yeah, there's definitely, so uh, to be exact, there are 400 different flavors of Kit And Kats. I did not send her 400. No, you didn't. <laughs> However, that is how many exist. So it's, um, 
this could go on even into season three. I think like we could break this out for a while because I'm after learning about this the way I have, I am kind of obsessed with like the concept behind this and um and what it all stands for more than just the concept of the Kit Kat. So I think you're gonna go into some really interesting education right now. Um I did uh I'm tr I'm trying to do better at citing people, um, but I found this. I I found a lot of things, but like the most comprehensive I believe like site of them all was this one called Tokyo Treat that had like a whole bunch of bloggers on it, and I feel bad because her name is just Jen, and there was a picture of her, but there was like when I clicked the name, there was no last name, there was no nothing. Like, nothing there but she oh. did a really great write-up so i'm calling okay. jen out um and because she did the history behind japanese kit kats and i and um and she and this is a newer article this was written like very recently so i don't know if i don't know if we just like fell on the wave of a trend because it was like a lot of up-to-date hmm. articles on this even though this has been going on for a long time so um they it opens with this and then i'm just going to go into facts but it said did you know that although japanese kit Kat, kit kats most widely are known for unique flavors they didn't actually come from japan but instead originated in england what well that's not england has some weird ass flavors yeah so this concept didn't start in japan it did start in england which the nod to simona's lover paul hollywood mm, paul hollywood <laughs> <laughs> and um <laughs> but the non-chocolate flavors are really where it started to get interesting in japan so yes. all of a lot of the ones in england as simona likes to say yeah, are, england. are um had like the the cocoa base but then once <laughs> the japanese abundance of this happened later it that's when things started to get real real um, the history of it in Japan started <laughs> hashtag the real, not, real. A, not an ad, <laughs> <laughs> but pay us if you want to real, real. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Simona. You should, we all know she should be on that commercial. If not do the voiceovers for that commercial. <laughs> Hit me up real, real <laughs> or anybody. But anyways, we digress. So, um, 1973 was when, um, they the Kit Kat started to be go to go over to Japan and be more of an abundance. And then after that, they developed the first flavor that was non cocoa based, which was strawberry. Oh, that makes sense. Strawberry is a, a, a crowd pleaser. And we look like strawberries. A yeah, bit today too. Our shirt is our shirt is like a strawberry pink. If we would like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, again, Tokyo Treat has a whole bunch of. Um, interesting facts on here, but this is what I love the most. There's two factors about this Kit Kat concept and why it's so popular. Okay. So the first one, um, the first one is that Kit Kat, the way you say it in Japanese sounds similar to the way you say good luck. Hmm. It's like Kit Kata. And then um, I will let me find it sounds and and it's like Kit Katsu is like good luck. So when hmm. you say that it, it's it, they sound very similar, similar. Okay. in the way in what they're what they are. So it's like I'm giving you a good luck, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other one that I kind of like even more so because I was always the I've been I don't know if it's just like how I was raised, but like, I don't usually show up to people's houses without food or wine or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. There's this concept of, we, we know the concept of souvenirs to be, you buy a souvenir and you give it, so, uh, sometimes you buy it for yourself. Right. Sometimes you buy it for somebody else. It's not, and it's usually an object. In Japan, there's something called, oh, Omiyagi, mm -hmm. um, and I'm probably like over pronouncing the G at the end because I don't have uh, the right dialect. 
but it is it, conceptually they'll say it's like a souvenir, but what it really is, is getting a, most likely a food item mm -hmm. and buying it from the place you visited and giving it to like, not getting it for yourself and giving it to somebody else. Oh. So it's a very, it's very specific when it comes to like, uh, so you're getting kind of a taste of where you visited to so share. This, this concept was made for me. Honestly. It was made for me. It was made for me too. In that like conceptually, this is something I feel like I always do because when you go to like, I've been doing it more and more as I get older, because like I travel a lot and I, and my dad traveled a lot when I was a kid. So he'd always bring you like magnets or like, you know, like, you know, yeah. stuff. there were like things like that. And then I, after I started traveling a lot, I started to be like, I, you know, there's like Austin, I always get like spicy chocolates and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd be in like Austin a lot, like things that, you know, you could carry with you. Right. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. But for me, it was more like, well, you know, this is a cool taste of like, you know, some it's kind of- It's like the specialty of the place. It's a specialty of the place. And it's not like a tchotchke because we know that right. I'm, I move a lot and to have too many like little things. I would love like a food product from a place rather than an item. Yeah. And we do this as friends too, you and I, we often send each other some food item plus a right. gift. Right. It's, it's, you know, and so I think, and again, this is like Simona and I as people prior to like us doing this podcast it, It's just, so anyway, I love that concept. And so what the way they did was in Japan, the reason why there's so many different flavors is because they take things that are regional to certain areas of oh, Japan. Wow. And so when we were going through the mirage and plethora of everything that we got, um, certain flavors are really from certain regions. So you, so you, there's specialty areas. So that's why there's also so many, I don't think all 400 are always in circulation. Um, and then I think the last important thing to note is that in 2003, um, Yasumasa, Yasumasa is a chef, is a pastry chef that got hired by Nestle to come up with new flavors. So oh, his okay. first flavor in 2003 was passion fruit. Uh, yeah, like a passion fruit type flavor. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of cool YouTube videos about this chef and like him coming up with the new concepts. And it's actually very beautiful too, the way they present them because they're so colorful because the bases are so different. Um, oh, so amazing. I highly recommend you going into like down the tea trap with some of these facts if you are really interested because it's kind of fascinating and it all comes from like a very loving, endearing concept, which. That's great. I, think I, nice. I love that. That's incredible that that's where it came from. Yeah. So I, um, so thank goodness for, I guess, Kit Kats existing mm -hmm. and Kit Kats is a very, I mean, COVID changes the way we want to share foods, but Kit Kat is a very like shareable food friendly type. Yeah. And like the ones that, you know, are the smaller size, it's, you know, individually wrapped where like you get, well, the two bars, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Size. These ones have the little two. Yeah. So we, all of ours are the smaller size today. Um, and so last night we went through and decided which ones we wanted to try. In some cases you will see, um, a, a English translation on them. Right. And in other situations you don't. And so we basically each chose one where there was an English translation and we're each going to try those separately. And then we also are going to try two together. And what's funny about these other two is that a lot of them have like funny cartoons on them. Yeah, and, illustrations. And neither of us had the same illustrations. However, <laughs> we had the same colors. So we're assuming that they're the same type. Flavor. Yeah. yeah. So we're, so this is a little bit of a guessing game. It kind of makes me want to learn how to read Japanese after this, just because I'm so obsessed with this concept, but, um, but Simona, I'm going to have you go first, um, and your choice. Okay, great. Um, so the one that I can read, uh, is Kit Kat sparkling wine with strawberry. So I'm really interested to try this to see if they've like been able to capture some carbonation 
Um, and so it comes, it's a blue wrapper with the Kit Kat logo. Sparkling wine is in a sort of cursive uh, font. And then there's also this woman, <laughs> excuse me, fli- oh, there's for Lauren, it's a woman doing an arabesque ballet. Mm-hmm. Um, but mine is a, it's, I mean, could be a woman, whatever. Um, and she is cooking and oh, that's frying like such something. a diverse difference in like these, yeah, these women. Yeah, wow. she's she's frying something or making something. I um, didn't even see yesterday that this said with strawberry. I only yeah. saw because it's like cut underneath it. Yeah, it's like a little. It's like an afterthought. All right, I'm opening it. Okay, and it says alcohol consumption zero point one percent. Please refrain from children and those who are weak in alcohol. Oh, wow. I sometimes do feel weak in alcohol. Are you weak in alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. Please be um, careful. I have to say upon opening, it is crumbly. Like some of it is broken. Eat responsibly. Um, And since it's broken, I can see that the inside of the wafer is pink, hence the strawberry. And the outside looks like it's white chocolate. Like it would be a white chocolate Kit Do Kat. you want me to do the nose with you? Oh, I can really smell you the can? strawberry. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. I don't smell sparkling wine, but it wouldn't have a strong flavor anyways, or smell, I should say. But um, it's mainly on the outside. It's like a, it's like a beige color, yeah? It's like a white chocolate Okay, color. okay, okay. And it is um, very strongly smelling of strawberry, especially because it's broken. Maybe I wouldn't have smelled it if it was intact, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Ooh, it's a weird face we're getting. Usually someone who doesn't scrunchy nose face. Uh... <laughs> oh. it, there's no sparkling wine at all. Okay. It tastes like white chocolate strawberry. Okay. But, you know, it kind of tastes like strawberry. It doesn't taste too artificial, but it tastes like strawberry. Like Pop-Tarts? No. Like That's real strawberries that have been out too long and like they're bruised on the verge of becoming rotten Mm, mm. maybe it's the alcohol that's in this but it kind of tastes like a too ripe almost rotten strawberry (laughs) white chocolate kit kat so only give this to somebody you don't like on valentine's day (laughs) or somebody who doesn't have discerning taste I tried another piece. Yeah, she's show. eating more of it. Maybe you like the Ryan. Yeah, I stand behind my assessment. Okay. That doesn't sound appetizing at all to me. Somebody I don't recommend. Loves stra- I, you know how I love strawberries. So it's- I like strawberries a lot too, but I'm not like, it's strawberries already sweet. And then the white chocolate sparkling wine is cloying to me. So it's not something I would want to eat. I don't love a white chocolate. That's just me. There's, it's so, it's almost it's too so sweet. It's so sweet. It has to be yeah. like with other things for me. So I'm trying. Well, so that one, let's do like a one, let's do a scale for Kit Kats because I think there's so many from one to 10. Like, what would that, where would that fall, do you think? Two. Really? I'm going to write this down. Just because I don't ever really want to eat it again. It's so hard for me to rate things like that empirically because. It's subjective a lot. and It is, but if we're going to end up doing a lot of these, I'd like to have a scale. Okay. You know? I mean, and I can retract my ratings, I guess. You can always. I... Yeah, you can. There's <laughs> or no... edit. <laughs> you don't have it's to put it. It's not set in stone. <laughs> no paperwork. <laughs> but I do think that it'd be interesting if we had them all like our favorite to yeah. these. Yeah. You know? But yeah. if you say that, I'm going to... From a taste stand, like from a tasty bud standpoint, I think I would agree with whatever you just said. Yeah. All right. So too sweet, and I wouldn't like. I give it a two because I wouldn't try it again, and mm-hmm. also, but it's not the worst thing I've ever had. Right. 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 Okay. So Lauren's showing her um, Kit Kat, which is citrus mint, and it's like a blue package, regular Kit Kat logo with a beautiful citrus lemon. Lime I think it's a lime. It looks slice. like a lime because it's green but because it's green but then it's next to yellow yellow oh yeah so it might be both um but i'm looks, excited about cute. this i love me a, i no. am excited i bet it's like white chocolate it is white chocolate which is not my favorite it's already very white hold on 
in um, that the white chocolate maybe again and the, the wafer is the thing that's flavored yeah so it it's white chocolate and it has oh. um, speckles inside of it it almost it looks speckles, like it's zested this yeah it almost looks like cookies and cream to be honest with you like the way the the speckles look they're not yeah. like green or anything they just look dark um, oh interesting they're not colored no it literally looks like a cookies and cream something. Oh, like, I like I would have thought it would have been green flex or something. I would have thought so too, but I don't I'm trying my best to show this. But yeah, yeah it I guess it just looks like cookies and cream. It looks like yeah. a cookies and cream, like Hershey bar. Is that the one who makes that yes, cookies and cream? Yes, bars? yes, yes. That's what it looks like. Um so this is a very <clears throat> I, I can't pinpoint when I've smelled this before, but this is a very it's I feel like this exact scent has hit me before. Um well sutra's mint is comment it might be a tea it might it's very strong this is very strong so it's not just like it's, this is strong it might also smell like a cocktail we could smell like a mojito because a mojito has lime in there maybe that's kind of but it's strong you get you get uh you get the citrus first and then you get the mint okay and then that's when and then there's like almost like a sour smell when you hit hit the chocolate smell so is it like, it's mint, mint, not like peppermint. It's like fresh no, it's, mint. It's like fresh mint. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm excited. I broke mine in two. So you can see the inside definitely is green inside. Okay. Yeah. We can see that. It looks, it know, looks lime green. Looks lime green. All right. I'm going to go in. You're thoughtful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the deal. The nose is better than the taste. Mm, okay. In that I, I was expecting more flavor. The wafer is what's green. Right. Just like the strawberry. Was is that what yours pink. was? Yeah. Okay. So if that's the, if that's the citrus part, I wanted, I almost wanted it to be more sour because it had this almost like soury smell mm -hmm. um but it's actually it's pleasant it's good it's it tastes like refreshing it's more i think has a mint taste than it has a citrus taste the mint oh interesting um which is interesting with white chocolate i think yeah the, yeah it's like a little not not as common um it's good though but it's just i i was expecting it to have a little more of a a soury punch got it a citrusy punch yeah mm -hmm. And I'm All going right. again because it's good and I don't want to waste it. <laughs> so what would you rate it? I'd rate this like an even five. Okay. It's kind of like middle of the road, not amazing, but like definitely not bad, pleasant. Yeah. Would you eat it again? Would you buy it at a store? If I you would buy it? this one as a gift for somebody because it tastes unique. It's not, but it's, you know, some people don't like the adventurous flavor, so well, yeah, I know it's, it's, a, it's good in the middle ground. Yeah. But it's different. It doesn't, I mean, obviously this doesn't taste anything like a normal Kit Kat. Right. So, so it's, it's got enough, it's, it's enough difference and enough, uh, for like an American taster, uh, it would have enough novelty of being different. Um, nothing too shocking. So mm -hmm. yeah, five makes sense to me. Yeah. I would totally give this one a five because yeah. Um, and I would eat it again. It, it would be good with tea. We know I like tea a lot. <laughs> yeah. It would be good with a good regular tea. Um, cool. All right. We're going to go in. So we basically are calling these ones the black and the green ones. <laughs> um, you do know what they actually are, Lauren? I Well, I know what the black one is. Okay. The green one could be one of two things because they had two. The way I had to do some research on this was a lot about the packaging. Mm. Um and so I did go down quite the hole last night on a lot of the flavors that we've looked up. Um, but the, so the green one has, it could be two options. And until we eat it, I don't think we're going to know. Uh, right. So that's kind of exciting. Okay. So it has, okay. Yeah. Cause I can see, so on the black one, maybe like it's hard. I don't know if it has a name of what it is on it, but the green one, there's like a, a silver ribbon that has two characters that is probably the name of name what of it. it is. Yeah. Um, okay. But their other green packaging looked so similar that yeah. it was like, I, I don't think I'm Because I feel be... like a lot of the green ones are matcha. Um, 
which is, you know, a very common flavor. It's one, that's one of the two possibilities. Okay. So this is a, mine has like a, <laughs> like a cool little, like, I don't know, liony character on it. This was one where we ended up having a FaceTime last night. Cause I'm like the one with like the lion on it. And she goes, the one with the grandma. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? It, we both have the black. So it's literally a black, um, packaging it has a Kit Kat logo and it's black and white the rest of it and it has an illustration and mine is I think is a grandmother with a beautiful polka dot shirt and white leggings and a bag <laughs> and she is throwing a Kit Kat and being like hey I brought you Kit Kat because you're she's my favorite grandchild. Good luck or something. Cause that's yeah, the, she's like, yeah. good luck on your job interview. And then mine has it. He looks some like either religious or spiritual kind of little like lion or animal. Um, could be an anime character. Like, I don't know, but he's adorable and he looks special. Um, he looks regal. He looks very regal. Um, so, you know, we just kind of, we were looking through them. So we were going in. So let's, um, I, I don't want to say what it is. I'd like okay. us to eat it first and then yeah. we can talk about it. I'm opening so, it. Me too. Okay. Upon first peek, it is chocolate looking. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And it says Kit Kat on it in like okay. the English in the of imprint Kat. of the bar. Mm -hmm. Smells like semi-sweet chocolate. Or maybe milky? I can't tell. But it's a darker chocolate than milk chocolate. Yes. So. And I just broke it. Like, give me a break. All right. And we're going for it. You're eating it? Mm-hmm. I'm not getting much nose besides the dark chocolate. Same. And to be honest, there's not much flavor in the wafer either. So I just feel like it's like a semi-sweet dark chocolate Kit Kat. It is. That's all it is. It's just dark. Oh, um, I won. I won. <laughs> you did. Um, I was like hoping this was going to be licorice. Um, because but maybe of, they don't use, who knows if licorice is really a thing in Japan. Yeah. I don't know either, but they do use a lot of flavors at this point. They have 400, they've had 400 flavors. So when it was black, I was hoping it was something like crazy like that. Um, but or no, like the, squid ink. That something cool. just something yeah um but no this one is a velvety chocolate crunchy wafer and dark chocolate they sometimes call this the adult kit kat i read some articles about that because it's maybe that's why i have the grandma maybe because it's the because it's <laughs> dark chocolate right and, right, and right. kids usually like the milk chocolate it is still sweet though. Like I didn't get it's 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 good. It's, it's like, not like like the healthy dark chocolate where you don't taste like no, it's not like 72% or something. Uh -huh. Um, I think it's fine. Like if somebody handed this to me, um, I'd be like, Oh, cool, thanks. thanks this is the called dark chocolate the Kit Kat. Atona no Amasa dark chocolate flavor. Okay. Um cool. okay. So this one I'm excited about because we're not sure what this is. So the two options here is that this could be wasabi or it could be matcha. Oh no, so, I wish you didn't tell me it was the oh, wasabi. <laughs> Next time, you don't have, tell me. I'm sorry. You wouldn't, we would have known immediately, but what, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see oh, dang. What. I really wanted to be able to I'm say. sorry. It's okay. Next time. Next you're going to know immediately. Well, you're the one who said matcha first. So I wanted to like. No, I get it. Um, but we could pull out one of our other greens if you have yours close by. I don't know. We, I think we might have both. So I just want to say, what's the illustration on yours? Mine oh. is a fish trying to eat a Kit Kat. Mine is a crab, Krabby Patty. Oh, Hold, so I wonder, up, like, why is it so, like, seafood -y? Kit Kats. I don't know. All right, I'm smelling it. You can't smell. It just smells sweet. I think this is matcha. Did you eat it yet? I'm not, but the smell of it, I feel like it's matcha. Yeah, it's matcha. It's matcha. I really wanted it to be wasabi. It's good, though. It's nice because I don't... Eh, I'm, like, very 50-50 with... It depends on my mood whether I like matcha or not. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's very, very slight matcha. It's like I think they could have gone deeper with if you're going to call it matcha i want to really like taste the grassiness of it you know 
But it does have a matcha. The more you eat it, the more you taste it. Mm-hmm. The the chop whatever the ma- the base of this one because some of them it seems like they make the flavor in the wafer. Right. This, and this one this was in the chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the chocolate was like the color of matcha too. So here's the other one. Wait, this isn't. This is the other color. Right. This one is probably the wasabi. Well, we'll find out on another episode. I don't have the, I don't have them. That's okay. But this one, this one might be the wasabi. (laughs) I mean, honestly, they think they changed the packaging a lot on them. And we bought them in like Simona. Simona, Actually, you know, what's cool, Simona, too, is that you, you sent these to me. So you kind of did the gift. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did the, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's Omiyagi. Uh, Oniagi. Okay. <clears throat> Yay. Um, yeah. Next time, even if there's two choices, don't tell me what they are. I won't. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're already fighting, guys. The New Year's <laughs> is how we're starting the new year. I hope we have a sep- episode two. <laughs> oh, boy. Drama. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> We're very real housewives over here. She, it, the story for next episode of Real Housewives would be like, she told me <laughs> it could have been wasabi. <laughs> and I'm just going to be like, I'm just trying to be a transparent friend over here. And, you know, she said half. She said matcha. So she gave away the half. So I assume she knew. <laughs> and then the other talking head, Simone will be like, Lauren had all these fucking problems with the computer this morning and I hate her guts and she didn't want to keep going. She almost quit because she froze halfway through and she was like so, an alien. So on my Zoom. complaint is not about just wanting to be surprised. No, okay. she's mad about so many other things. And I'm like, I can't help it. I don't know. I can't control the internet and computer. Well, Next time on Real Housewives of Keep Snacking. <laughs> Um, well, I'm sorry, Simona, that I said it. And I'm sorry that, um, this would be episode four. We're just escalating to it. now. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, and we're, I'm we're sorry bar- that I'm the having, hatchet now. I'm sorry. I was having computer issues and I got frustrated off screen. <laughs> and I accept your apology. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You monster. I love you. Love you too. Um, well, that's it for this episode. Yeah, there was drama. There was Kit Kats. Uh, there was <laughs> QAnon. I mean, there was a lot going on today. Uh, um, there was the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Ishk. Oof, my God. <laughs> and there was ambitious women. That's right. Which is what we care the most about. Listen, sisters you guys are doing it for themselves. Yes, sisters are doing it for themselves. I want everyone to stay safe. Thank you so much for getting us to season two. And um, let us know if you have your favorite Kit Kat, because we, if you know anything about Japanese Kit Kats, we will, Yeah, we have a whole bunch, but we will also find. Yeah. Uh, if you're like, oh, I love this one. I'll find it on Amazon or some other Asian grocery store and we'll try it. We will try it. And until next time. Keep